Welcome back to my channel, where in this fourth part of the Bard class series, I will continue to show you what it looks like to level a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition Bard class character within Fantasy Grounds. In this video, I hope to complete levels 8 through 20, but depending on how long it takes to run through the various levels, there might be another video needed to help close off those higher levels. But for now, the intent is to finish it off within this video. So with that, let's continue leveling our character up. At level 8, we are not gaining any new proficiencies, we are not gaining any new cantrips, we are getting an increase in our known spells, and we are getting our second ability score improvement feature. So let's go ahead and drop this into place. Now I'm simply going to deal with this spell first, just to get that out of the way, and I'm going to do that. And now I can focus on the ability score improvement. So if you recall, in the first ability score improvement, I made one modification to a skill to increase that by two points. In this particular case, to show you the difference, I'm going to choose two ability scores and increase each of them by one point. And the score I'm going to choose is my dexterity and my charisma. And now we can see that we now have an increase in our Charisma bonus as well as our Dexterity bonus. We've also had an increase in our Armor class. And any skill that requires the modifier bonuses from Charisma and Dexterity will have also seen an increase in addition to our saving throws. So we're really giving ourselves a good advantage here. But there's one change that we have to make. Bardic Inspiration is used based on the number of times that equals our Charisma modifier bonus, which in this case was a 3 and is now a 4. So we need to adjust how often we use this. And we can do so by changing that to a 4. And that's all we have to do. And that completes everything that we have to deal with for level 8. At level 9, we are gaining an increase in our proficiency bonus. We are not gaining an increase in our cantrips, but we are gaining another known spell. We are also gaining access to 5th level spells, so we should take that into account when we select our spell. And our Song of Rest is also seeing an increase. So let's go ahead and drop this level into place. I'm going to first deal with the spell. Drop that into place. Minimize for now. And leave that there. Now, Song of Rest... Oops, up here. <laughs> We really don't need to do anything, because we've already done it. We have already, quote-unquote, preloaded, if you will, the increase we were going to gain, so we don't actually need to make an adjustment here. That makes things nice and easy for us. So with that, that actually completes everything that we have to do for level 9. At level 10, we are gaining an increase in our Bardic Inspiration die rolls. We are gaining the extra two skills that we can add to our expertise. And we're gaining a new feature called Magical Secrets. And finally, we are gaining a two-point bump in the known spells, as well as an increase in our cantrips. Now, with that done, I'm going to go ahead and deal with our cantrip. And I'm going to take Prestidigation. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Hmm. Prestidigation. Wow, that's a tongue twister. I'm cursing the person who ever created this word. I will tell you that now. <laughs> I now understand why we gained access to two spells here because it's taking into account the magical secrets aspect of this. All right, so let's continue on with our features. So let's deal with the Bardic Inspiration change first, and that's simply a matter of opening this up and changing this 8 to a 10. Oops. Do not get rid of any semicolons. There we go. And just to be sure, I'm going to open up Bardic Inspiration again and just make sure that there's no increase in our duration. Which I don't think there is. No, there is no increase in our duration. So we're good. Next, I'm going to deal with Expertise. If you recall, 
we gained two more skill proficiencies at level 10. So let's go ahead and pick Arcana and Performance and add those to our proficiency bonuses. And as you can see, <laughs> we're now getting a plus 12 to our performances and plus 10 to Arcana and plus 12 to our Stealth and plus 12 to our Acrobatics. So our proficiency bonuses are helping us out quite well. Excellent. What about the new Magical Secrets feature? So let's pop that open and take a look. With the Magical Secrets feature, you are now able to gain access to spells that you normally otherwise wouldn't be able to cast. For example, because of your discipline with magic and the fact that you have now plundered magical knowledge from various disciplines when it comes to your research and, and creation of your stories, you are now able to take spells that could be divine or arcane or druidic in nature or sorceress in nature and actually cast them. So you could theoretically choose a fireball spell or a lightning spell or any other spell of your choice. It could be from the mages spell list. It could be from the clerical or druidic spell list. It could be from the sorcerers or wizards spell list. It's entirely up to you. If you've got a spell that you like to use as other characters you might have played, you can decide to choose that. It's entirely up to you. For the purposes of this example, I'm going to pop open the spells field here and just search for Fireball. Because I always love Fireball. I don't know how many DMs I've created problems with because of that spell. When you drag it in, it will fall under whatever level 3 grouping you have. In this case, it fell under here. And for the purposes of the remainder of your character's life, this spell will be cast as a, uh, a bard spell, which means it will apply or make use of your charisma as its actual spellcasting modifier. So we have to make sure that we adjust that. And that's going to be charisma. Excellent. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Now, I get to choose two spells. Uh, thinking, what else could I choose? Well, if you're unsure, you could always just sort by level. Now, in this particular case, I can cast up to level 5 spells. So, I'm just going to simply grab one for the purposes of this demonstration. And modify memory. That's always fun. And there, I now have a level 5 spell called Modified Memory that is now a Bard spell. <laughs> and once again, this is going to be a Charisma check, not your standard Intelligence or Wisdom for the purposes of your spellcasting ability. Now, we also gain the ability to choose two additional spells at level 14 and at level 18. And that's everything that we have to do to finish off level 10. So let's prepare for level 11. At level 11, we are gaining a single known spell increase, but we are gaining access to level 6 spells. So let me go ahead and apply this level. Minimize 4 and 5. Oops. And let's drop uh, Mass Suggestion into place here. Okay, and that takes care of everything that we need to do for level 11. At level 12, we are gaining an Ability Score improvement, but we are not gaining anything else, including we are no longer gaining any increases in our known spells at this point in time. So, let's just deal with the Ability Score improvement. Drop that into place, and I'm going to set up and find a feature. So I've come up with three feats that I think will actually apply fairly well for a bird. The first being linguist, in that it would give you the ability to increase the intelligence, which is sort of a bonus, but it does give you the ability to add additional languages, which would be highly useful for a bird who might be acting for an organization and is trying to spy on somebody. 
or pay attention to conversations that might be going on. Additionally, you'll be able to create written ciphers, which means you should be able to quote unquote, hide the content of your discussions from prying eyes, therefore be able to more secretly pass information around. Definitely beneficial for someone who wants to get into that kind of configuration. The next one is observant. And this one would be useful because if you are on one side of a room and someone is speaking in a language that you already understand, you'll be able to read their lips. As a side effect, you also get an increase either to your intelligence or wisdom, but you also gain a bonus to your passive wisdom and passive intelligence scores. So that could be beneficial as well. And finally, actor would help actually increase and improve your performances over time. So your charisma score gains an increase up to a maximum of 20. You will have advantage on charisma, deception, and charisma performance checks when trying to pass yourself off as a different person, which is great. And you can mimic the speech of another person or the sounds made by other creatures. You must have heard this person speaking or heard the creature make the sound for at least 60 seconds. It will take an insight check and it can be contested by your charisma before the actual effect could either apply or is determined to be fake. So it's entirely up to you which one here would make sense. But again, this comes down to if a dungeon master will allow you to take a feat. In this particular case, I'm simply going to throw the actor in place because that makes the most sense for this particular character at this particular time. And to do that, all you do is drag the icon into here. You will not need to make an adjustment to your charisma score as that is already going to come into play, but we could potentially set up this feat for a few other things in the actions tab. Okay, group, and this would be feat to give us advantage on deception and performance checks. Now we can do this by creating a new effect. And it will be uh, actor, semicolon, ADV, skill, colon, and it will be deception, comma, performance. And what this will mean is that as long as this effect is on our character, we will gain an advantage to either of those particular types of roles. So I'm going to quickly pop this open and drop this effect onto my character. And then I'm going to go over to here and make a deception roll. And we should see it rolls twice, which it does. This means that it's working the way that we anticipate it. Now, in this case, I rolled a 7, which is kind of funny because it looks like I actually rolled 7 twice. <laughs> Great. But for anyone who is able to see the color green, you will notice that this die is green in, in color. That tells you it is an advantage roll. If you are unable to see green, you can just look for the keyword ADV. If it is red and you have a blindness to the red color, you would look for DIS for disadvantage. And that's everything that we need to do for that particular bullet point of this particular feat. In this next one, you could potentially add a wisdom saving throw check here. And doing that just simply by adding an effect, select cast, and it will be a wisdom type of saving throw. And in this particular case, it's going to be against your charisma because you're using a bird feature in this particular case. So that would be the score that they have to actually roll. So you would roll that on behalf of the person, and then you would flip over to your skill point here and roll the deception check and see which number was the higher. Now, the dungeon master would have to tell you whether that number that you rolled for a particular character was higher or not if they're hiding values. So... The other option is you just have the Dungeon Master roll for the target in question, and then you simply roll your Charisma Deception check, and then whoever has the highest value wins. 
But that's everything that we need to do for the actor here in this particular case. At level 13, we are simply gaining an increase in our Song, re song of Rest hit die roll, as well as an increase in our known spells. So let's go ahead and drop this into place. And add a, do we get access to level 7? Yes, we do. So we are getting an increase to the spell level. And I'm just going to drop this into place. And that should not have gone there. Delete that, minimize that. And I'll just grab that instead. That's fine. Not a big deal. There. Excellent. Now what about Song of Rest? Well, once again, we've already gone through and set everything up. So we don't need to actually go and do anything because we already have 13 to 16 here. So for this particular uh, character or level, I should say, we are done because we don't need to worry too much about the proficiency bonus. At level 14, we are gaining a double bump, if you will, in our known spells, but that's because we're gaining a magical secrets bump in our spells, as well as a Bardic, Col Bardic College feature. Now, once again, I'm not covering the Bardic College feature here. However, I am, for the sake of simplicity and expediency in this particular video, just going to simply grab two spells from here. So that and that. And that takes care of everything that we have to deal with when it comes to level 14. At level 15, we are seeing the final increase in our Bardic Inspiration die rolls, as well as an increase in one known spell. So let's drop this into place. Oops, apparently I didn't add level 14, so let's go ahead and do that now. We're now at 15. All right, so let's grab another spell. Let's grab this one. And I'm going to make the adjustment to our Bardic Inspiration to 1d12. And that takes care of everything that we have to do for level 15. At level 16, we are going to be gaining our last ability score improvement. And in this particular case, I am simply going to look at increasing... Well... Let's uh, max out my Charisma, and then bring this up to 16, just for a bit of a difference here. Now, once again, I've had an increase in our Charisma modifier bonus, which means I need to increase the number of uses of Bardic Inspiration. And other than that, that is all of the changes we need to do for level 16. In relation to level 17... We are gaining our final increase in Song of Rest die. We are also gaining an increase in our known spells. We are also gaining our final increase when it comes to our proficiency bonus, and apparently we've already gained our last cantrip, so we don't need to worry about that. So let's go ahead and drop this into place. So that's level 17. Once again, I'm going to take care of our spell. Now, at level 17, we are actually gaining access to level 9 spells. And I kind of glossed over the fact that we gained access to level 8 spells for level 15. It really wasn't an overly important thing because there's not very many of these spells here. So, what I'm going to do is simply choose a level 8 spell in this particular case. And I'm just going to drop that into place. Eh, wrong spot. Let's minimize this and then drop that into place. Okay. And take a look at our Song of Rest adjustment. But once again, we don't need to make an adjustment because we've already got everything in place. So we are finished when it comes to level 17. So at level 18, we are gaining our final Magical Secrets increase here. Now, I've already run through this, but forgot to hit record, so I've already applied the level, and I've already dropped two level 9 spells into place, and I'm not going to worry about that for now. But, once again, I just wanted to remind you that Magical Secrets means we could take these spells from any class. You're not restricted to just the Bard spell. But, this only occurs at level 18, at level 14, and at level 10, when you gain that Magical Secrets ability, as well as the subsequent improvements. So just keep that in mind. But for now, we are done with level 18.
At level 19, we are gaining our last ability score improvement, and we're not really gaining anything else besides that. So I'm just going to quickly drag and drop this into place. And then make a hmm, tough call. I'll bring this up two points, so that'll be up to 15. And that gives me a plus two bonus, plus I've had an increase in our perception bonus here, or passive perception. So I don't need to worry about anything else. And I don't have to worry about our proficiency scores or our known spells. So we're essentially done with spells, so we can close that. At level 20, we are now gaining our final feature. Everything else we've already gained. So I'm going to drop level 20 into place and drop over to Superior Inspiration and just pop this open here. So the way Superior Inspiration works is that if you are in the combat tracker and you have to roll initiative, you've used up all of your Bardic Inspiration points, which are these particular points here. When you trigger that initiative roll, you can regain one of your uses back. So let's say that we're starting a new combat round. We've been asked to roll initiative. We've burned through all of our Bardic Inspiration in the previous two rounds. And, or what we had left at that particular point in time. And I've now made my initiative roll. Once I've done that, I can regain one use. And only one use. That gives me a Bardic Inspiration to use pretty much at every turn going forward during a combat round. That is a very powerful capability, especially with a 1d12 bonus that you can add to things. I love that. But there's nothing we have to do to set this up inside of our combat tracker, which means we have essentially completed leveling this character up through to level 20 and adding in all of the appropriate features and skills and some minor adjustments to spells. <laughs> so with that in mind, let's close off this particular character. As you can see, it's not an overly complicated process when it comes to adding new features to the bard. They're relatively straightforward, mainly because you're simply modifying ones you've already added to your Actions tab. The only complication will come down to your spells, and specifically when you get to the Magical Secrets feature. So, all you really need to do is keep in mind when you have to make adjustments, which you are correctly informed as part of your class table, as well as when you need to add new spells to your list. Beyond that, I hope you found this video informative, I hope you have fun with a bard character, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general, and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video, or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section, and I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th Edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe, and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.